Good afternoon. Am I on? Am I on? There we are. Good afternoon. Welcome on behalf of Kathy to this service of the celebration of Margaret and David's life. This is a time of joy and celebration because we know that they are together again and that they are in the presence of their Lord. And David, those of you who knew him well, knew that he was part of the Air Force and he was very proud of that. So we uh, are honored to have the VFW Honor Guard here today. We, the veterans of the White Mountains, are assembled to pay our lasting tribute of respect to our departed comrade. When the call of our country was heard, comrade David McDougall answered, Self was forgotten in the cause of the greatest good. As a brave man, he marched away, or flew away, <laughs> in the abiding faith of his God his country, and his flag. The red of our country's flag was made redder by his heroism. The white more stainlessly pure by the motives which impelled him. In the story field of our nation's glorious banner, the blue has been glorified by the service he was given for American ideals. Comrade Chaplin, please invoke the divine blessing. O oh God, Father of us all, we hereby extend these final earthly tributes to our beloved comrade. Accept our prayers on behalf of the soul of thy servant departed. Welcome him to thy house to rest in peace. Look with mercy upon the loved ones bereaved by his passing. Comfort and console them through thine own tenderness. These things we ask humbly in thy name. Amen. One by one, as the years roll on, we are called upon to fulfill these sad duties of respect to our departed comrades. Let us so live that when the keeper of the eternal record shall have called our names for the last time, those we live, leave behind may say of us as we now say of our comrade, here lies all that is mortal of a true-hearted comrade and a fierce defender of his home, his country, and his flag. Comrade Chapel. We'll have a reading of the 23rd Psalm and then another prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I will pray. Heavenly Father, the march of our comrade is over, and he lieth down in the house appointed for all the living. We are reminded here at the frailty of human life and the tenure by which we hold our own. In such an hour as we think not, your final summons may come, which no one disobeys. Our comrade is in your hands. Lord, we will be reminded by the place he fills no more that our ranks are thin. We pray that each one be so loyal to every virtue, so true to every friendship, so faithful in the remaining marches, that each will be ready to fall out and take their place in the great review hereafter. Amen. Amen.
our comment, we can appreciate the service. Even though the Air Force guy is that great. Thank you so much. We're now going to let the family rise and go out to the parking lot to watch the rifles salute. They've invited anyone who wants to come out and fall in behind us and to observe it also. I will ask that if you're wearing a hat when you get outside, that you remove it except for you uh, uh, until after you're playing a taps.
taken your seats, I'd ask you to stand if you can, and let's sing All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, and it's hymn number 97. Again, that's hymn number 97 in your hymnals. say something about your mom and dad. Uh, the brochure has got a lot more in there in detail. I'm going to try to leave, leave uh, the discussion as to as, uh, as if Dave and I had spoken, which we did many times. Dave and Margaret were the very first people to welcome us here at the church when we first came. And it was immediate that we knew we had some common ground because he had an accent you could not ignore. <laughs> Margaret uh, shared on a number of occasions several things, but one of the things that resonated with my wife and I was that she was uh, an adopted child. And we had two adopted children, so we had some common ground. Uh, she was raised in a loving, a loving fashion and basically was very proud of her, her, her college, which unfortunately started with the wrong letter. It started with the letter L rather than the letter O. <laughs> Louisiana, Marty and I are both from Ohio, and so Dave and I would banter that around at some length, particularly during football season. She would proudly tell Mar Marty and I on a number of occasions how she had established early on an accounting business and was so proud that she had run that for so many years. But yet, in the, in the face of all the activities that were part of her life, she always found time to swim. She was an avid swimmer. One highlight that I wanted to share occurred uh, when we had dinner with Margaret and Dave. It was toward the end of uh, her life when her health was in decline. And she hadn't been eating very well. And we went over for spaghetti. And uh, after we had eaten the meal, Dave told uh, Marty and I, he, he said that she hasn't eaten that much in four weeks. The unfortunate thing, it wasn't the entree, it was the garlic bread that Marty had made. <laughs> Dave found another home here in the mountains. He loved the mountains. He loved fishing. We all know that. He loved the Sunrisers group on Wednesdays, and he loved the coffee hour. One of the things that really uh, touched me was his commitment to the veterans. His commitment, particularly when the, those veterans that were 
had been affected either mentally or physically would come up to, for a weekend and they would fly fish. And that was a highlight for Dave when he could instruct and be part of that, that weekend. It was very special. Recall on a Monday, uh, it wasn't but about three weeks ago at a coffee, uh, we were sitting there talking about uh, Dave and Margaret, and one of the ladies said something that was very Im impactful. She said she knew how much he loved Margaret because he would allow her to pick the jewelry that she would put on. He would, later on, he would dress her, take care of her daily needs, but when it was time to get ready for PW or something, he would allow her to pick that out. And that resonated with this lady. It was a gender thing, but it really touched me that she picked up on that. They found time to, to chat. We know that. He, he basically, you couldn't, you couldn't encounter him without him engaging you in conversation, and the topics would be varied. He was a putterer. He putted around the home a great deal. He found time to make birdhouses, which he would uh, use to dis display, feed the birds, and also to give them to neighbors. But he, he found time to do bigger projects, the last of which I know was the shed he built to, to house his tools and those things that were at his house. So he, he, never, he never wanted for things to do as a... Uh, as a man of his age, I, I read the brochure as I came in. His doctor was not wrong. You know, this guy had the mind uh, of a 50-year-old. I was touched personally when he would call on occasion and ask me uh, to give an opinion medically. Uh, it meant a lot to me that he would pick the phone up and, and trust me with, uh, with uh, comments I might make as it related to something that was going on with Margaret or with, with, uh, with himself. He had an instance where he had a severe hemorrhage when he was uh, on an oil rig. And I probably was in the North Sea, as I recall. But he nearly died. They had to evacuate him, and he got a number of transfusions. God had other plans for Dave, though. He, he gave him to us. He gave him to us to enjoy. And frankly, uh, the folks and organizations here in the White Mountains uh, really have benefited immensely from him. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, particularly those veterans that he t took care of, the fly fishing club in general, he was very fond of. He mentioned at one point that uh, his Louisiana church had redone a campsite for some youth, and he t took great pride in the fact that uh, after they had completed this, what I'd call renovation, Dave uh, got in the boat and would go out and sit in the boat as these kids at the, at the church campsite would be fishing and swimming. Marty and I basically share a lot of good memories of Dave and Margaret. And we'll miss them. But we know that Jesus has welcomed both of them up into the home eternal. God bless them both. Well, that's a hard one to follow. He knew, he knew it all. <laughs> uh, how many fly fishermen, raise your hands, do we have here in the audience? There you go. How many sunrisers do we have here in the audience? <laughs> that's what it is. And we, I've known Dave and Margaret ever since they first came here. We were their neighbors around the corner. Dave was one of the funniest laughable, greatest guys you'd ever want to meet. And I can tell you that because we had a lot of laughs, a lot of jokes, and a lot of, a lot of uh, good times together, whether it be on his porch, over at his house, my house. So I've been asked to give a two-hour dissertation <laughs> on what we did. Oh, no, we're not doing a two-hour one. Okay, well, I got a backup. I got the one hour. Not the one hour. Wow. Well, Bob did say a lot, but just in case, I always carry a five-minute one. <laughs> got to have something. So anyway, I want to tell you about a guy that just 
he had that little boy devilish smile. And I tell you, <laughs> the first, first time I saw it, I said, yeah, he's one of me. And we, talk, <laughs> we talked about Louisiana and, and Baton Rouge, and I ate his cooking, and he'd come to the church, and we'd be eating a chow here at church and having a good time. I, I reminisce back, and I, I say, now there's a guy that really enjoyed life. Uh, his daughter <laughs> bought him a puppy. <laughs> I tell you, yeah, that was that was the day when he brought that pup over to our porch. And me and Jeannie, we were sitting in the chairs, and Dave was on the couch with the pup. That pup was on him like white on rice. Hey, licking on him and and just loving him, tail going 90 miles an hour, and he's over, get down, get down, get down. <laughs> I knew that dog was going to be his dog, and it was. He loved that dog more than anything. I will say that he was a great uh, inspiration to me when Margaret got sick. And you had to know Margaret when she was up and hitting on all eight. That's a smart woman. She was sharp. She knew her stuff. There was nothing short on education or things that she couldn't do. And Dave, he was the same way. Together they were like peanut butter and jelly. They were a perfect blend. They'd drive in here in that Buick. He'd get the door for her. They'd come up in here, sit right over there, about three rows up from the back, first and second chair. We, me and Jeannie, we sat just behind him on the left side. And I'd watch him, and he, he catered to her. He did everything for her. When, when she was getting down, uh, I talked to him a, lo a little bit. I had the same thing that I went through in 96. So I could sort of give him a little brother uh, inspiration or something on him. And then when she passed, the Sunrisers kicked in and propped him up. And we grabbed him and let him know we got you. So to bring it all to a close, we all, we all seem to believe in, in a a great leader, a great God in the sky, and his Son, and the Holy Spirit. We all know about that, and we believe a lot of that. When people go home, it's a celebration of life. You know, if we had, if we had a violinist here, and a couple Cajun uh, musicians here, they'd be whipping her out right now. Because it is a celebration of life. Dave and Margaret are together, and they're happy. And I'm sure if he looked down, he'd say, and you all take care. Well, we're not Cajun, but uh, we definitely want to honor Dave and Margaret with our music. There we go. I forgot to warm up my finger before we got started here. We're standing on the promises. Yes, we're standing. Yes, we're standing on the promises. We're standing. Yes, we're standing on the promises. We're standing on the promises of God. If you see, if you see, you will find me. If you see, if you see, you will find me. If you see, you will find me. If you seek for me with all of your heart, behold, behold, I stand here knocking. Yes, behold, behold, I 
Storms and trials rise and fear on every side. I know you will uphold me for your promises of fire. You shall run, you shall run, not be weary. You shall run, you shall run, and not be weary. You shall run, you shall run, and not be weary. You shall walk with me, and you will not be faint. I will. Sorrows fill my life and sadness fills my eyes. I look out in the morning and his glory fills the skies. I go, yes, I to prepare a place for you. I go, yes, to prepare a place for you. I go, yes, to prepare a place for you. Yes, we're standing on the promises. Yes, we're standing. Yes, we're standing on the promises. We're standing. Yes, we're standing on the promises. We're standing on the promises of God. We're standing on the promises of God. Well, first, I want to thank you for all gathering uh, to celebrate the life of my mom and dad, Margaret and David, and David, a.k.a. Papa Mac. Their church and community meant the world to them. Pine Top held a special place in their hearts, especially for Papa. Wish to thank all the white mountain fish and streams today for contributing to his joy and fun of life. And of course, he would catch and release. So some of those fish probably met him on several occasions. It's hard in a few minutes to speak about my two fun-loving, caring, and kind parents. My mom, Margaret McCorkle McDougall, Scott, married a Scott, and there's their, their family plaid. Um, and all of you wearing red, thank you. Um, she had a clever sense of humor, compassionate, always volunteered to help at functions, and devoted to her family, friends, and church. She was known for her pound cake. Every party it was requested that she bring one or two of her pound cakes to share. At a party in Gilbert, one of the male guests asked, who made this cake, as he was on his fourth or fifth piece. Papa Mac proudly and promptly said, well, my wife Margaret did, and the gentleman said, then I want to marry your wife. Papa said, sit right down here, son, and let's make a deal. <laughs> you know, Papa. The gentleman and his wife became great friends to my husband David and I and my parents. My parents always proved great friends can be made over the simplest things or gestures. Mom had many talents, progressive in her day to be in the top five percentile of her LSU School of Accounting and the only woman in her class. She graduated valedictorian of her high school and throughout her entire life enjoyed entertaining. She was a cheerleader, a swimmer, a dancer, an accomplished artist, loved to learn new things and had a quiet strength to her and a warm smile. She made life seem really easy. Whether she was hosting her PEO group, a church function, the Art League, the Caledonian Society, everything was perfectly decorated and all felt welcomed. Of course, a good time and good eats was had by all. Gifts she imparted to my older brother Johnny and I were to be compassionate, to look for solutions when life is challenging, 
always was our personal cheerleader. She said, enjoy life and dance like no one is looking. She got us both involved in swim team, which taught us about staying healthy, hard work, and teamwork. Her love for gathering around great food and surrounding herself and ourselves with good people allowed my brother and I to have lifelong friends. Dad is known by all, doesn't matter your age, as Papa Mac. He was a papa to all my brother and I's friends. Many times our friends would come over just to visit her parents. <laughs> Drove us crazy when we were kids, but proud and thankful when we became adults. As we grew older, our parties were held together with our friends and their friends. Papa was very successful in his petroleum oil industry career. He loved being in the Air Force and never let go of his pilot's license. He hung an American flag on every one of his homes, and his favorite colors are red, white, and blue. He had an insatiable appetite for fun, as many of you probably experienced, and he vigorously cheered for the LSU Fighting Tigers. I'm sure there are some of his lingering explo explodatives still hovering in the air somewhere when a game went wrong. They will not be mentioned today because we are in church. <laughs> Aye, he would say. <clears throat> His love for fishing brought him together with people across the United States. He was a member of the Baton Rouge Red Stick Fly Fishermen's, the Desert Fly Casters in the Valley, and the White Mountain Fly Fishing Group, which he loves so dearly. He would trade fishing trips all over the U.S., and his part of the trade was to offer his fishing camp in secret fishing spots in Grand Isle, Louisiana, which I'm sure most of you heard about, for a trade in a stream he hadn't yet conquered. He was the Grand Poobah, the master of embellishing a great fish tale. I'd always tell people, believe one half of one half of one half of what Papa says. And there's truth. Papa was known when one was in his presence. You would never know what he was going to say. He always made you laugh. And I think on occasion he made up some of his own vocabulary and assigned his own definition. I'm sure you heard some things and he's like, oh, that's Louisiana. Probably made up. His ability to weave a two-minute story into a 15-minute tale filled with every detail and, of course, a smidgen of embellishment or enhancement was his own true art form. Mom was an artist. He was an artist of language. Papa's gumbo and jambalaya are as famous as Mom's pound cake. Together they made culinary magic, although, to my knowledge, he hasn't had a marriage proposal from cooking these dishes. His fun injection of the Cajun language, like say c'est bon, which means it's so good, or good gris gris, which means meaning good things to happen, or comme c'est bon, was his favorite to say, and that means all good with you, all good with me. It was apropos that I named his Christmas gift a beautiful female golden retriever, ma chérie, which means my sweet darling. Our family has struggled over the years with tragedy. My brother, Johnny, died at age 45. I promised myself I'd get through this and not cry. Suddenly and unexpectedly. No parent should ever lose a child. My brother lived near my parents, and they double dated all the time with he and his wife. At the time of his death, my parents resided in Baton Rouge, and my husband David and I were in Arizona. My parents taught me through this tragedy how to get through grief and loss with faith, dignity, grace, and embracement of great memories. We would always sit around and share the wonderful memories and, and laugh and enjoy them. A couple of years after Johnny's death, Mom and Papa moved to Arizona to be closer to David and I, which we had absolutely loved. They purchased a house two blocks from mine and Gilbert. My husband sometimes would say that's a little close. Um, <laughs> David introduced Papa to Pine Top. Pine Top will never be the same. Papa's happy place is his little red cabin on Rim Road, which I will keep. So stop by and see me when, I'm, when you see my car on the drive. David and Papa, those two were a river ran through it. 
fly fishing until they couldn't see any more at night. It was a deep, shared love for them. After they came back from fishing trips, Mom and I would settle in for the bantering of stories. Pictures, of course, for proof of measurement. My husband took photos of everything because he knows my dad. Even David even had a measuring device on his float tube so that Papa couldn't embellish the size of his catches. Great fun for Mom and I as we were spectators of the storytelling extravaganza between them. Typically, I just poured another glass of wine. <laughs> Ultimately, Papa's best catch was my mom, Margaret, as they were very happily married for 62 years. About the same time mom was diagnosed with dementia, my husband, David, was diagnosed with glioblastoma brain cancer. Uh, Papa and I became even more supporters for each other, safe haven to share how we were feeling and we banded together to get through our trials and tribulations my husband of age 54 passed away on November 19th of 2018 about the same time mom's declines were becoming pretty rapid I looked up at my papa as he was an amazing caregiver for my mom the love for one another was deep and beautiful. Mom passed on November 19th of 2020, exactly two years to the day to David. I think David called her, so Papa and I could always have this date to share memories, remember the good times, and grieve together. Papa's strength, compassion, love and pathway for continuing to live and embracing new journeys after mom's passing helped me with living in my new world. So proud of Papa for taking his 5,000 trip mile across multiple states over six to seven weeks. I know you probably all heard the stories. <laughs> in his journey of those six to seven weeks on the road, he only stayed two nights at a hotel. The rest of the time was with family and friends. And with this trip, Papa rose from the ashes. One of my favorite speeches ever is Jack Lindell, a coach of Marshall. It is his graveside speech, and if you haven't heard it, Google it. After the tragedy of the town of Marshall losing almost their entire football team, I've changed the speech a little to reflect Mom and Papa. We came here today to remember Margaret and David and they will be watching and smiling upon us. How you live today is how you will be remembered. This is our opportunity to rise from the ashes and grab glory. Tragedy will not define us. And Papa's honor as a man who lived larger than life, I have cooked his gumbo, jambalaya, and Creole barbecue chicken to share with you today at the reception. Mom and Papa were great hosts and entertainers. And if they were here right now, they would say, Les A, les bon temps roulés. Let the good times roll. And thank you for celebrating my mom and dad's life. Larry, you couldn't do your two-hour dissertation because I have an hour speech going on here. You never give a pastor a mic, right? <laughs> Bob says we're hungry. <laughs> I'd like to read to you um, some scripture. The first one comes from Matthew, and it is chapter 22, verses 34 through 36. So listen to this. When, when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together in the same place. And one of them, an expert in the law, asked a question to test him. Teacher, which command in the law is the greatest? He said to him, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the, 
all the law and all the prophets depend on these two commands. And then the, we also read in John 14, your heart must not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. That's Jesus talking. In my father's house are many dwelling places. If not, I would have told you I'm going away to prepare a place for you. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. You know the way to where I'm going. Lord, Thomas said, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And those are the words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was thinking about what to say today, all the usual memorial celebration of life verses went through my mind, like the John passage, I've gone to prepare a house for you, or the Revelation passages of what Margaret and Dave experienced when they drew their last breath. And then I decided to sit and pray for just a moment. And I kept hearing the Matthew passage. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And as I thought about that, I thought, that's it. Isn't that how Margaret and Dave lived their lives? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. There is no doubt in my mind that Margaret and Dave did not love the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, and mind. Unfortunately, I did not have an opportunity to get to know Margaret, except at the last days. But I heard some, from some women of the uh, PW Club. I asked them, tell me about Margaret. And I heard this on two different occasions. She was great. We would be sitting and talking, and although she couldn't quite follow the conversation, Every once in a while, she would come out with a scripture passage that fit the occasion perfectly. Even in her dementia, because she had written the, uh, the words of God upon her heart and upon her mind, so she loved the Lord that she could quote scriptures at the right time. And Dave, every Sunday that he was in town, he sat in that chair with this big smile on his face. And the sunrisers. Wednesdays you could count on Dave. I don't know if it was for the donuts and the bagel or the company. But David was always there at sunrisers. He loved the Lord his God with all his heart, soul, and mind. And he didn't preach it. He lived it. I remember just hours before he suffered his devastating stroke. He spent time with his Sunrisers group in this fellowship hall talking about the Lord, sharing his life with his fellow Christian men. And I have a dog named Miko, who's the unofficial official mascot of the church. And I would open the door, and she went running back right to David. And he picked her up and gave her love and put her down. And he and I got to talking about our dogs and Dave, with his big smile, began to tell me about his dog, who uh, happened to find the fire extinguisher in the kitchen one day and figured out how to get the pin out of the fire extinguisher. And not only that, he figured out how to work the fire extinguisher. And there's Dave with this smile on his face, laughing as he's telling me this story. I will hold that memory in my heart. And then... Did you notice Christ says love at the beginning of both of those commands? It's an agape love. It's a love that is not a brotherly love, but it's so much deeper. It's a love that is of forgiveness. It's a love that accepts you for who you are. And David and Margaret lived that. I remember when I first came here, and David invited me to the house for gumbo. And I have to tell you, I had tried gumbo before, and I did not like it. But I was not about to tell David that. He said, come on over and have some gumbo and meet the loves of my life. And those two loves of his life were his wife, Margaret, and his daughter, Kathy. And I agreed, and I have to tell you, I ate every bit of David's gumbo. I don't think David ever knew a stranger. He loved all people as himself. 
We've heard stories of, of how Marty and Bob and he, he and Margaret and Bay embraced them and, and how he helped the vets and, and what he meant to Larry. And I'm sure you could all tell stories of how Dave touched your life just with his infectious laugh and smile. As we leave here today, we have a choice. We can say, well, that was a great celebration of life and a great way to remember David and Margaret. Or you can say, you know, they left a great legacy and we want to carry that legacy on. And how do we do that? In this world that is full of divisiveness over political affiliations and other things, in this world of a me society, in this world of I take care of myself, you take care of yourself, we can live as David and Margaret did. We can love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and we can love our neighbors as ourselves. There would be no greater legacy to David and Margaret. And as we live that legacy, it will go on to our children and our children's children and their children. And as such, David and Margaret's life will continue throughout the generations. I don't know if you know the Lord if you don't. There are people who can help you know the Lord. And I know that one day you will be re reunited with David and Margaret. They're probably ha Mick and Gumbo up there for you and Pound Cake now. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Let us pray. Oh God, we do desire to live a life that is pleasing to you and to continue the legacy of your faithful servants, Margaret and David. We give you thanks, God, for their lives and for how they touched our lives in so many ways. Lord, help us to keep good memories in our minds. Help us to live as they did. In Jesus' name, amen. We come to a time now where... Is there anyone who would like to share a memory with Kathy before we close the service? I have a mic I can bring to you if so. Would you? Oh, okay. <laughs> Here, let me bring you. I can speak loud, man. Trust me. <laughs> uh, My name's Diane. <laughs> real quick, folks. I was telling Kathy, who I just met today, that I probably knew uh, Dave shorter than anyone here. But it's that impression that someone makes on your life that will stick with you forever. And when he first came in the coffee shop with the other men and women who gathered to get together, he saw my photo on the wall, and it was in uniform of my wife and I. And, and I'm from Pennsylvania. So Southern talk is not coherent with me. But he said, was you in the army? <laughs> and I looked at him like, I haven't heard words like that since black and white television. <laughs> Was you in the army? <laughs> and it clicked immediately. Just immediately because I loved his smile. And I loved his outlook on life. And he just said, I'll take this coffee over here and put some sugar in it. <laughs> I've been to Louisiana, um, not station, but Fort Cheney and Fort Hope, Louisiana, twice. Um, and the mosquitoes were as big as pterodactyls. And I'll never forget that. And I have met men such as Dave and, and the way they spoke and the impression that it makes. And um, like I said, short time, lasting the Thank you. Anybody else? Willis. Kathy said she's made some of David's famous gumbo and jambalaya. Thank you for sharing that. That's great. Yeah. And you did his accent very well. I am impressed. <laughs> um, and you can share memories with Kathy there. Before we close, I do want to read... Um, something, can I share this, Kathy? This, Kathy found this among David's things, and this speaks of who David was in his writing. God, 
Grant that I may live to fish until my dying day. And when it comes to my last cast, I then most humbly pray. When in the Lord's safe landing net, I'm peacefully asleep, that in his mercy I be judged good enough to keep. Isn't that wonderful? Before we close, let's stand together and sing the words of blessed assurance, and that's hymn number 345. Life will never be the same. We will miss David's lap in this church during fellowship hours that have really good cookies. Kathy told me that he would tell her every Sunday how good the cookies were at fellowship hour. <laughs> and we will miss his lap, Dave, I'm sure you will, at the coffee shop. But let us keep his legacy and Margaret's legacy alive by loving the Lord our God and your neighbor as yourself. And now may you go in peace knowing the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And until we meet again, go in peace, my friends. Go in peace. Amen. And let us share some really good gumbo and jambalaya and chicken. <laughs>